Hi, it's Magazine Memories time. I love my Magazine Memories. Looking at old catalogues, old magazines. This one, absolute classic. The Tandy, none of that Radio Shack rubbish. No one is Radio Shack in the USA and Canada. Uh, 1979 to 1980 electronics catalogue. Thank you very much, uh, Ant Cross from Liverpool in the UK. How do I... Hi to all my uh, viewers in the old Dart. Yeah, it's even got it. None of that Radio Shack rubbish over there either. And uh, he found this in old books and thought it'd be a awesome thing to check out. Well, it is. Let's go through it. Anyway, this could be a long video. Buckle up, Dorothy. Now, I used to actually collect all, not only all the Tandy catalogs, all the Dick Smith, Altronics, and J Car catalogs, all these catalogs. I used to collect the uh, Tandy flyers as well. As in, like, I think they came out with these monthly, uh, like, flyers, like specials catalog. They were like, you know, 10, 20 pages long or something like that. Don't recall exactly. And I think there's actually some scans of these available online. But anyway, I collected those for like, I don't know, a decade or more. And in a big move, I decided to throw them all out. Oh, goodness. Anyway, let's see what the electronics from 1979 slash 1980 was like. Let's check it out. Look at this. I mean, it's all about audio back then. We're still talking turntables. None of that CD rubbish. So, ah, oh, fantastic. Right off the bat. And it's all in uh, UK pounds, of course. None of this uh, dollar rubbish. This is new from 1980. Realistic, of course, one of the uh, Tandy brands. In fact, yeah, here it is. Radio Shack, Realistic, Science Fair, Archer, Micronta, NSL, Clarinet, Optimus, Archer Kit, Concert Ape, never heard of Plug and Talk, eh, don't really recall that one. Anyway, um, I did actually did work experience in year 10 at high school at the Tandy Warehouse. I actually, uh, and Repair Centre, it was the main uh, distrib like the main headquarters in Australia, and I actually uh, was working on repair of uh, the old Tandy computers, like the Model 3s, and uh, I think, I don't think the Model 4 had come out anyway, I think it was mostly like Model 3 uh, computers back then, uh, the big business one. We'll no doubt see some older vintage uh, computer stuff in here. Anyway, look at these, like, it's audio. We service what we sell. Fantastic. And I used to love just flicking through the catalogs and do it over and over again. So I, I knew everything that like Tandy had. It was just oh, absolutely fantastic. Anyway, look at this awesome stereo stuff. Please leave it in the comments. Once again, new for 1980. Please leave it in the comments if you had any of this gear, you see anything familiar or you're still using it. I mean, all this audio gear, it'd still work. No worries whatsoever. The best is a good system, a better system, the best system. <laughs> I love it. So like, you know, package deals, they combine them. A moderate cost receiver. Oh, Dolby, Dolby noise reduction. It's got a touch of class, luxury, hi-fi at affordable, low price. That is very low priced, isn't it? Wow, LW and medium wave uh, reception. That's like, that was a thing back then. Does anyone still have a cabinet, a floor standing cabinet based stereo system? Please leave it in the comments. <laughs> This is brilliant. Hi-fi for the audio connoisseur, for those playing along at home. Low price separates for true component stereo. Turntable with quartz lock, so you won't get any of that uh, wow or flutter rubbish. I precision belt drive, oh, look, it's just fantastic. And a changer, you used to be able, yeah, you used to whack the CD, CDs. You used to whack the records on the top and then it'd change it. The arm would come out, the little uh, like uh, like pin thing in there would drop and it would drop a record down and you could actually play. It was a stacker. It was the original uh, record stacker. And uh, look at this, four ports. Oh no, they aren't ports. They're horn tweeters. Four horn tweeters, four mid-range. Wow, that thing's just thumping. Anyone still using any of these Tandy speakers? I wonder where, does anyone know where they used to source their uh, drivers from? Open reel decks were still a thing. Does anyone still use open reel? <laughs> Fantastic. Our finest ever front loading stereo cassette decks. Three heads, dual capstans, double Dolby. Oh, it's all happening. I still have one of those sound level meters. The old realistic analog meter sound level meter. I've still got it somewhere. <laughs> oh, microphones. Flashing disco lights, nothing's changed. 
Now look at these old boxy headphones. These look like aviation headsets. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't think uh, Tandy used to sell aviation headsets. That was the uh, old uh, Tricky Dick, of course, because he was a pilot. If you haven't watched my Tricky Dick video, please do, where he talks about his round-the-world adventures in a helicopter. He was the first to circumnavigate the world in a helicopter. Fantastic talk. Highly recommend it. Phones were a big thing. Uh, still that ro rotary dial. Do we... Oh, we, what, touch tone? Wasn't in in 1980? Oh, I thought it was. Intercom systems, they were all the rage. None of that digital rubbish, all analog. And we've got the sound level meter again. Build your own speakers, all the interconnects. Archer soldering supplies for the professional hobbyist. Cordless rechargeable soldering iron. High quality soldering irons. Were they temperature variable? They were, yep. They've got the little temperature adjust. That was my first soldering iron. I'm not sure if it was a Tandy one. Probably would have been. I don't recall. I think it was. And it had, yet yeah, the little temperature adjust trimmer down the bottom. The instant big ass instant heat gun. Oh, love it. Nibbling tools. They haven't changed over the years. Wow, that's a fancy looking thermometer. I like that. It's almost a piece of furniture. Wow. Antennas, none of that newfounded digital rubbish. Oh, now we're onto the components. Look at this, Archer capacitors. I wonder who actually made the Archer capacitors. Does anyone know? Anyway, uh, uh, trimmers and uh, sliders and pots. And uh, look, these are, our, uh, these are our power trannies. So that's the Tandy catalog number, but uh, oh, there you go. Tip 31, audio uh, power transistors, a double two, double twos, and all the rest of it. Power trannies, FETs. You had a few FETs down here. None of that MOSFET rubbish. No, Ger germanium was still a thing. Wow, I didn't know you could buy an 8080 processor at the time from Tandy. I don't think they ever had that here. Um, a lot of this would have varied. That Tandy in Australia didn't sell as much uh, stuff as overseas. Wow, they didn't have as comprehensive range of this. Uh, Philips uh, TDA, like 20 watt amplifier modules and octave synthesizers, triple fives, of course, Mosta lead drivers, static RAM, wow, static RAM chips and everything. Yeah, I don't think Tandy Australia ever sold those, did they? Please correct me if I'm wrong. But geez, you know, I was only a kid at the time. A lucky dip grab bag of uh, IC timers may include 553, 555, 556, 2240, summer jewels, summer completely resettled lump in a wide supply range. <laughs> Fantastic. 10 opto couplers. They just whack in whatever they could uh, find it. Well, wasn't the Shenzhen market back then? Didn't exist. Yep, I've still got one of my original uh, Archer breadboards somewhere, I'm sure. Anyway, lots of uh, proto boards, things like stabilized power supply, <laughs> six output voltages, that's just terrific. And etchant materials, because yeah, everyone etched their own stuff back then, that was a thing. Switches, connectors, and then cases, oh, wood look, aluminium cabinets, 19 inch racks, digital display cases, auto clock case, look at that, fantastic. Wow, they had modules, look at that. Wow, that's, that's fascinating, time temperature clock module. Now, this is something that we didn't have in Australia. Tandy slash Radio Shack didn't sell kits. You had to go to Dick Smith or J Car or someone like that to actually uh, get, well, J Car wasn't around then, but yeah, you had to go to Dick Smith to get your kits. I didn't know Tandy actually made kits. This is interesting. Does anyone know where they came from? Did they come from the, I assume they came from UK uh, electronics magazines or did Tandy actually uh, make their own Kits, please leave it in the comments because I'm sure Tandy never sold kits in the 80s when I was a kid. I'm, oh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they didn't. Anyway, there was my first multimeter. I still have it. The uh, 22201, uh, 18 range, 20k ohms per volt. Absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I lusted after uh, the you know, and the big ones. This is the dual FET one. I do actually have one of those now, but I didn't have one of those when I was a kid. And the original FET uh, VOM, new for 1980. Oh, terrific. Anyway, that was my very first multimeter. Saved up all my pocket money for that when I was a kid. And uh, that was my big purchase. And I couldn't even dream of owning a digital multimeter, let alone an oscilloscope back in the day. We were dirt poor and, you know, I had to work hard to save up for my... I can't remember how much I paid. Maybe it was 20 bucks at the time. Uh, I collected a lot of aluminium cans back then. 
um, at Alco, I cash a can for it to get, save up for my multi meter. <laughs> that was a lot of hard work. And of course, I've done videos on the classic uh, 50 and 1, 100 and 1. I started with the 50 and 1. That's what got me started in electronics. I don't have the 50 and 1 here. They got newfangled 75 in 1. But I started with the 50. I went to the 150. So I had that exact one. And then I went to the 200 in 1, which is not here yet. That actually came out later. I don't recall ever seeing the digital uh, computer kit here I think that didn't one of the other bloggers was it Fran or somebody did a video on uh, the uh, the computer kit similar remote control cars that are a thing um, but they didn't go very fast they were pretty pokey anyway fun filled electronic games from Tandy look at these um, one of these uh, that would have been who originally did that that was like a ColecoVision similar or you know uh, it, it's not actually that but you know yeah you got the photo uh, sensor and you got the guns which would um, shoot and uh, uh, receive the signals from the uh, CRT TV and you could play very crude games that was six fast action TV games football squash tennis and they all look the same <laughs> it's hilarious <laughs> my Kronta uh, bedside clocks are oh, digital watch it's an odd looking stopwatch. Anyway, power supplies, yeah, like they didn't have any lab supplies or anything like that. So, that's disappointing. Yeah, you know, it was mostly consumer with a bunch of, you know, they did sell, you know, they'd sell you two resistors in a little cardboard packet for your, you know, dollar or whatever. Um, <laughs> the whole famous, Tandy were famous for having, you know, you could buy a couple of resistors in a box, a couple of diodes, one diode or something like that in a little cardboard thing. You'd go to the racks and get it off. But hey, you know, it was the nearest thing to me. Um, uh, I, if I had to go to, uh, if I wanted to go to Dick Smith, I had to hop on the long bus to Blacktown, which was the nearest store or, uh, catch a train. Often I'd go into the, uh, city in, uh, little Silicon Alley there in, uh, York Street. I'm sure I've mentioned that before where there was a row of, they had, uh, uh, David Reed Electronics, Dick Smith Electronics, J-Car Electronics, and who, no, Altronics weren't there. Were they? No. No, I don't think so. Anyway, there were like three or four of them in a row there, all in uh, York Street. I think, I don't know, I haven't been there for so long. I think only one of them's still there or something, or if not any. Anyway, some old car radio is fantastic. Super tape, super chrome, realistic. You know, that was the cheap garbage. You go up to the super ferry chrome. Brilliant. And have the reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Oh, this is great stuff, but I wasn't really into that. Desktop calculators, though. Oh, look at this. <laughs> For all the accounting and stuff like that. And oh, we've got a couple of scientifics. Back then, of course, all the Tandy calculators are all rebadged uh, Casio calculators. They're the ones who... Uh, who did them all, so you can get the exact same models in uh, Casio, so that's like the FX82 or something like that, if memory serves me correctly. So, but of course they never put the uh, Tandy Radio Shack rebadged everything. The fat free battery a month club, hands up, hands up if you had more than one, or even one, or more than one free battery of the month card. Every month you'd go in and they'd mark it off and it'd have uh, like a, every month on it and they'd either like stamp it out or cut it out or something like that. And you went in and you got your free battery every month. And of course you'd always get the 9 volt one, right? Because that was the most expensive and the most uh, useful. So yeah, you wouldn't just get like a single double A or D, you know, occasionally you might get a couple of D cells or something, but you pretty much always go for the uh, nine volt jobby anyway that's that was terrific they didn't give you the standard ones i don't think yeah they wouldn't ever give you the alkaline ones anyway ultra top in a cell miracle seal jacket for leak protection lasts up to three times longer specially processed electrolyte oh scanners my old man had a pro 20 this is the pro 2001 my old man had a pro 2020 scanner and i used to listen to it all the time because back then you could pick up the 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 police and the ambulance on just regular analog frequencies so you could just listen in to all the police uh, cars and the, and the, you know talking back to base and all that sort of stuff so he used to like listen in he was obsessed with listening in to that sort of stuff i don't think i have that 2020 anymore anyway um yeah the first thing i did i secretly took it apart while he wasn't wasn't around he went out and first thing i did was take the thing apart and i was amazed there were like surface mount stuff in there i believe and oh it was just anyway if i can find it i'll put in a, 
a shot of the uh, Tw Pro 2020 scanner. So hands up if you had a scanner back in the day. They were they were a big thing. And you could even listen to uh, mobile phones. When mobile phones first came came out, of course, there was none of this digital rubbish. It was analog. So you could actually listen in. I think it was eight, eight, 800 megahertz or something. You could actually listen in to... Uh, this one didn't... Uh, is it 470 to 512? But yeah, I... I distinctly remember, oh, maybe the 2020 did higher. I distinctly remember listening in to uh, people's analog uh, <laughs> phone, you know, uh, mobile phone calls, and they were just boring as you very quickly gave up, you know. So, yep. Anyway, oh, look at these, like, portable desktop cassette ones. Where's the, you know, um, yeah, long wave. Yep, long wave receiver. That was all the rage. Transistor radios, fantastic. Listen to the trots. Just more remote control stuff. Bedside clock radios. Oh, we're coming to the end. Oh, anyway, Trash 80. All the Trash 80 fanboys go wild. They're probably upset with me for calling it a Trash 80. Anyway, the growing library of TRS-80 user programs on tape. RS-232 serial interface. Expand your system. Voice synthesizer. Ah, oh, brilliant. Hands up if you had the Trash 80 voice synthesizer. Wow, I don't think I don't ever recall that being sold here, but maybe it was. Anyway, you want a printer? 1150 pounds for this top of the line dot. 120 characters per second. That sucker is screaming along. Absolutely. Where was that? An 18 pin? No, a nine by yeah, nine. No, it's only a nine pin jobby. Ah, oh, for that sort of money, I'd want the I'd want the 18 pin. Jeez. Anyway, you could buy the matching furniture. <laughs> Fantastic. And the TRS-80 expansion interface. They don't... Um, yeah, they don't really... That's it. Anyway, it's on the back. There you go, the TRS-80. Uh, it's it's the Model 1. That's all they had. So they hadn't even uh, got on... Uh, presumably, no, 1980, if I remember my timeline. Um, when, when did the Model uh, 2 and Model 3 come out? Anyway, uh, yeah, there you go. You could expand that sucker. And uh, before they release their uh, business uh, machines, of course, like more, you know, this is like a consumer-oriented uh, one, but then they got into the business ones with the Model uh, 3 and the Model 4 and others. But, uh, you know, look at this. Expand it with four disk drives. This is incredible. Expansion interface. Unbelievable. Ah, oh, there you go. Ah, oh, that didn't take too long. I thought that'd be I thought it'd be much longer than that. Anyway, there it is. So thank you very much, Ant Cross, for sending that in. That brings back some memories. Fantastic. Good, better, best. <laughs> Please leave it in your comments. Your best memory of your Tandy stuff. And do you still use Tandy stuff back in the day? Uh, memories of visiting Tandy as a kid, because I can remember walking up there, I, I needed my, you know, uh, 4000 series uh, chip or, you know, 74 series chip, I'd go up there, you'd get one chip in the little cardboard packet that was hanging on, uh, resistors, a pack of 100, oh, dream on, there you go, yeah, you'd get your pack of two resistors for 12 pence, <laughs> 12 P, back in the day, a oh, pack of five, oh, I could, what's it? What? Oh, they're, they're, the, they're the half watt jobbies. They're the big ones. Um, yeah, the quarter watt resistors pack a five for 12p. Low noise. <laughs> five percent jobs. <laughs> terrific stuff. But, you know, they, they had it all in their cardboard thing. It was terrific. And you go up there and you get your individual chips. And, yeah, that's how I did electronics back in those days. On a breadboard or a home etched PCB. Fantastic stuff. Anyway, <laughs> give us your best memories down below in the comments. Catch you next time.